Apparently, Mom's some kind of Wabanaki superwoman. Who knew? Okay, so she was always obsessed with rituals and traditions. <laughs> Dad couldn't take it. Made him so mad, my mom and him kept fighting over it. I thought it was just superstition. I guess there's a lot more to it, and she started teaching me about all that stuff. It's pretty cool. I suppose I just have to trust she knows what she's doing. Red says I'm next, that I'll inherit her gift. I really don't know what that's supposed to mean. I'm not sure I want to inherit Mom's gifts. I hope at least I get to learn a hex or two. There are some boys in school I'd like to place a hex on. Oh, wait. That sounded really bad, right? <laughs> A few more weeks of this, and I'll even be ready for that fishing trip upstate my uncle's been threatening to take me on. All I have to watch is what I brought with me when we came here to stay with Uncle Red. And anything with zombies or werewolves is off limits. I just can't get into a story that has a pretty girl falling for a hot vampire anymore. It feels very wrong. And there's nothing to read around here. It's either Russian authors and poetry or horror stories about small towns in Maine. And I've had more than enough of both. I didn't mean the thing about the fishing trip. I think it'll be nice once this is all over. Uncle Red and me, we get along. He's teaching me to play chess right now. Oh God, I wanna get out of here so bad. I wish there were more of us here, not just Mom and me and Uncle Red, but others from the tribe. Or even better, that we could just move to the trailer park. But no, that's impossible, because you know there's this big disagreement in the tribe, and nobody talks to anybody anymore. I know someone did something bad to someone else like 40 years ago. I think it had to do with my grandfather, but that was like 40 years ago. You'd think they'd be over it by now. What's wrong with people? Why can't they just work it out? Mom tried many times, but she always came home crying her eyes out. She gave up years ago. And Uncle Red never talks about any of them. Just goes all quiet and serious whenever someone mentions their names. I mean, I like Uncle Frank and Uncle Joe. <laughs> They're a bit gross, but <laughs> kind of funny. And old Joseph is pretty cool too. He's good at telling stories, even though he gets pretty long-winded at times just don't get it. We're family. We should be able to at least talk to each other. Kyra, did you do the dishes? Kyra. What? Can't hear you, Mom. Dishes. Not yet. What's the hurry? It's not like we're having visitors ever again. Oh, <laughs> visitors. Cool. So are you staying for dinner? There's rice and um, stale bread and the beef jerky my uncle made back in the 90s. He's never been able to sell it. Can't imagine why. Kyra, I have to apologize for my daughter, but it's not an easy situation for any of us. We're all going a bit crazy in here. I always thought that if we protected the land, if we played our part and did our duty, the land would protect us. So either that was all bullshit or we haven't held up our side of the bargain. Yeah, if we could all just get along like a proper family instead of bickering about who said what to whom like 40 years ago, then maybe we wouldn't be stuck here with nothing to eat except canned meat and peas. That's the price we pay for disunity and discord. But the land is strong and will fight back. Given a chance, we just need to harness that strength. So what are you waiting for, Mom? Go out there and like, harness. Beat sitting here eating baked beans. Oh yeah, there's also baked beans. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, and midnight snack. <laughs> it's surprisingly awful. It's not as simple as that, Kyra. I wish it were, but we're alone. I can't do this on my own. We need help. In the meantime, we have to care about the little things, like the chores. So will you please do the dishes? Fine. Fine! If the monsters eat us, at least they'll be using clean plates. I rebelled against pretty much everything in my teens. I abandoned my roots, got married, moved to town. I don't know what I was trying to prove, 
But I suppose I just wanted to get out from underneath all the history and tradition that I felt was weighing me down. The only thing I proved was that you can run away from everything around you, but you can't run away from who you are. It's just a matter of time until it catches up with you. I'd gotten married to the wrong man for all the wrong reasons. Bill didn't take it well, and it got pretty bad. I had to take Kyra away from all that. This you have a destiny business can be a heavy load to carry. You probably know that as well as anyone. All the expectations, it's not an easy thing to live up to. You end up disappointing everyone, yourself included. It's not like any of us ever asked for it, yet we get defined by how we live with it, what we do with it. Sometimes, it seems unfair that you can't just be, I don't know, normal. I tried normal. It didn't really work out for me. My husband disappeared a few days before the fog hit. He always used to pull stunts like that, go on binges that lasted days. But I'm obviously more worried about him this time. We're not together anymore, but I worry for Kyra. She loves her dad very much, and I know she misses him. Even if she doesn't let on, she's deathly worried. I can only hope that if we come out on the other side of this, he'll be there, waiting for her. It might be over between us, but I don't want my daughter to grow up without her father. Whatever Bill's faults, and there are many, he always treated Kyra right. We are so glad you came.